And shalom everyone, shalom. I want to welcome everyone back to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. And today we're going to be going through lasciviousness. We're going to be looking at that a little bit closer. We're actually going to be doing some, some actual exercises to make sure before we leave this here today, we understand it. So we're going to be looking at that and, and we're going to go through a couple of exercises on it. We're also going to recap back on John to where we're looking at truth. So we just want to make sure a couple of those things we are prepared for. We want to make sure we clearly get it. We want to make sure that everything that we're doing, we completely understand it. That's the point of this. So a lot of stuff spawned it from this because what happened is... um. When we did the teaching on, it was another teaching where we were doing something else on. However, it ended up coming out to where truth came out a whole different way. So, it spawned at this. And based on that, we want to make sure as we move forward, we understand what is going on. So, one of the main ones we're going to look at, we're going to be looking at truth. We're going to find out what is truth. We're going to look at that, just recap that find out what it is to understand it as we did before. Then we're going to check with everybody and I can look and we can see what's going on. And then we should be spending maybe, uh, maybe about five, seven minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the most on the recap. And then we're going to go directly into lasciviousness, but we need to make sure you got your pencils, make sure you have some paper, make sure you have everything you need to, write down the information on what was going on because every week we're going to be going through a word that's in there and we got to understand how that word functions to where we can recognize that word even when we don't see the word we can recognize it by the acts that people are committing so that's what we're going to be doing so with this we're going to kick over we're going to get actually get over to the one part and the same thing is um we want to make sure that actually I got my little Jojo, the bishop, the one guy who always sit there and do the things. And this is Brother Bishop Elder Jojo. He's the church leader. If you're sitting there, you're one of these type of people where you sit there and every time you turn around, you're going to sleep. Can't stay up. Okay, we got those in here too. And then they try to remember what was going on. So if you're in here, then Brother Jojo, it's best you go on to sleep. And you come back with us and we'll deal with you in a little while. But the main thing is, let's go ahead and we're going to get with this uh, lesson. Let me pull this lesson up and we're going to go, we're going to recap on some of this real quick. So let's go over here and we're going to look at some of this right now. So with this, we, we, we have one part that we really want to remember based on what it was speaking about when we was talking about truth. What is truth? What is truth all about? What is truth going to do? What is truth going to help us on? So to help us just to remember it, and we're going to check and make sure everybody still remember what was going on with truth. I'm going to show you the last part to clean everything up to make sure that we all get what's going on. And we're going to look at what's going on here. We're going to pick this up in John chapter 18, but we're going to start at verse 35. And we're going to look at that. And it, and it talks about Pilate. And Pilate answered and said, I am, am I a Jew? So we see Pilate asking the question, am I a Jew? Because he's a, because that's telling you about a follower of Christ. And Pilate is telling you right up front, and he's telling you how is I or Jesus right up front, is he a Jew? Because if he's one, he's telling him right up front, thy own nation, including the chief priests, have delivered thee unto me. So he's sitting there saying, so he delivered thee to me. And if you is living the same type of lifestyle, you live in the same way that they supposed to be living as a Jew, as a follower of Christ, what have you done to where now they, they want to do you in? So that's, that's the point of this. It was a conflict. It was a conflict based on these Pharisees calling themselves Jews and based on what's going on on the other end. That was the issue. And this is where a lot of us comes into play to where a lot of us will sit there and say that we're something and we really portraying something else. And this is why Yahweh Shai had this problem. 
as it goes on, it, it speaks a little bit more and Yahweh I answered him. Once he answered him, he's telling him right up front what's going on. He answered, he's my kingdom, my kingdom, his, his providence, where he, where he, where he is, where he's from. And this is the word where it comes from. He's saying my kingdom, my providence is not of this world. It's not from here because if it was from here in his lifestyles and everything else, in what is commanded to God, he's telling you right up front. It's not from here. He says, if it is, then would my servants fight? You see what he's saying? Then would my servants fight? Why would, why would he say that? Because it's peace there. And when something and confusion and things start going on, we start having problems. We're going to see that, which actually was brought up earlier today in, um, in the uh, back area. And you see right here in Revelations chapter 12, and we're going to look at this and start at verse seven, because this is what he's talking about. He said, if, 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 if his kingdom was here, his servants would fight. And that's the same thing you see here in Revelations chapter 12, verse seven, it says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels because we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And this can't be no confusion there because everybody there is following Christ. That's the point. That's the focus. He goes on more. And we see in the kingdom of heaven, evil do not prevail. That's why it says, and prevail not. Neither were there a place found any more in heaven. Why? Because it's only peace there. It's only peace that's going to happen there. In fact, just to, just to, another piece to put in your pocket. When that is set up, they set is set up a certain way to make sure things will not go on ever. And we'll see this, and we're going to see this buried away. And we'll go to uh, Genesis chapter three, but we want to look at verse twenty-four because what we're going to do is watch what happened and how this actually works out. It says, "So he drove out the man. So he drove out flesh. Flesh was driven out of the kingdom of heaven." It cannot come in there. Flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Either neither do corruption can inherit incorruption. So he drove the man out. And then he placed at the east of the garden of the of Eden cherubims and flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way. To keep the way. You see that? To keep the name of the tree of life. That was the whole focus on what Yahweh was actually trying to explain to him. But the main thing is, Yahweh no matter what, he's going to be speaking in a parable, but Pilate is trying to really grasp what he's saying because he's not really getting what he's talking about. And if you look at that there, he's telling, he's a my servant will fight, and should not I be delivered unto the Jews, to these Jews, to these people, to these scribes and Pharisees. It says, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Because it wouldn't be all this commotion. They would love him. They would do these things. This is what the focus is. This is why it goes in that way. Now watch what goes on here to where we're going to get a little bit more. We're going to get a little bit more information. Pilate therefore said to him. So now since he's sitting there saying the servants will fight. And he's not understanding. He's talking to Christ. He's talking to the spirit of God. He don't know he's doing this. He he don't know that Yahweh is just a vessel. That's it. He don't know that. But he's sitting there thinking, okay, I'm talking to this man. And he's not seeing that. That's what he's not seeing. Because if you same thing, you look over there in um, John chapter 14. Actually, we're going to tell you what better yet. Besides saying that, let's go look at it to where we can keep that in mind. And that'll be an easier way to do it. So we're going to find John chapter 14. But you'll see where it says this here. And we went through this earlier as what it says. And you'll see where Yahweh speaks to this again. We're going to go all the way down to verse 11 from 10. It says, Believe it not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Why is he saying it even in that way? Because you're going to see the same thing on what we're going to clearly get as we run in strict precepts. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. We're going to blend them all together and we'll get a complete understanding. And it tells us right here. 
It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This is what the whole focus is. That's the whole focus. So believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else, right here is telling you, or else believe me for the very work's sake, because the Spirit of God dwelleth in him. So since he's dwelling in him, and that's why he's sitting there telling him, he say, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you what's going on, but this is what's going on. And he even said, he says, thou sayest, I am a king. He's saying that he's a ruler. Yeah, how would I not said he was a ruler? He didn't say that at all. But he says, to this end was I born. For this cause come into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. You see how he's saying, I should bear witness unto the truth. That's what he's wanting to make sure that he's focused on. Everyone that that is of the truth heareth my voice because we got to focus on what truth is. That's why we went through that. Truth is a lifestyle. Truth is understanding the wisdom of God and, and it provides, comes with that, comes with a lifestyle. And as it comes with this lifestyle, we can understand how it's working out because everyone that heareth the truth and we know now when you hear the truth, what happens? You're going to, it produces a lifestyle. What God commands, he commands a lifestyle of you. And once you get that lifestyle, you understand what you need to be doing. That's what he's talking about right here. Everyone that hears that voice, and that's why that's why it says it that way, in the same thing which we do, we're just going to put that there and understand why it's saying things, and now we get it. When you look at Romans chapter 9, verse 6, not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Because if everyone that bear witness of the truth and hears the truth, they want to follow a certain lifestyle. And if they not, then they not of the truth. Then they not of God. They not they not the ones that you're thinking of that they think they are. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see this also here when you look at Paul. When you go to Acts chapter 26, and we'll look at this, and you'll see what he says in verse 7. And you see, he's still talking about Jews, but these are not the real Jews. These are fake. These are Pharisees. It says, unto which promise are 12 tribes, 12 gates, 12 cities instantly serving God. That's why he's saying they're going to fight because they this the kingdom. Day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. This is what the focus is. And you see where Pilate sit there, and Pilate's telling him right up front. He don't understand what he's actually saying because he's going he gonna to voice it right here. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? What is truth? Truth is a lifestyle. That's why when I ask what is truth, and then people just start throwing in verses, putting in verses, putting in verses, putting in verses. And if you can't explain it, why why sitting there use a verse? Because now when you try to explain it to someone else, they're going to be just as lost as it was from the beginning. Because they don't know what the truth is. Truth is a lifestyle. Truth is the wisdom of God that he's going to tell you exactly what is righteous in his own eyes and you live the lifestyle that he has commanded of us to live. That's what it is. So with that, we, we, we should be able to move on, but I want to make sure we don't have no questions from this. And we want to look and see, make sure from that part that everybody is pretty good on. So what I want to do, I want to make sure that everybody was clear on that as we're going through. And I'm looking right now to see do is everybody okay is everybody okay there because then we're going to move forward on we're going to look at lasciviousness we need to look at that now we need to find out what's going on there so i'm looking over here and i got one clear and i'm trying to set up for the next segment of this to where we can understand but we should clearly get what was going on there we should get what was going on there everybody's okay Okay, clear, clear, good, 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 good. So everybody is good. Everybody is good. Now with this today, we're going to have some work we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing an exercise in here. But I'm good. Everybody is clear on this. That's good. And we are good. Good. 
All right, clear, good. Okay, so we're good. So everybody, to make sure, so everybody understand how, how truth works. Truth is, is telling you a lifestyle, and that's the truth of God. That's the word that he's using. So when people are just sitting there saying, and people will tell you sometimes, oh, it's the word of God. Okay, what part of it? To explain it to me because you need to be able to clearly be able to explain it if you can't explain it then then you probably don't know what truth actually is very clearly but this way we can explain it and then once you can explain it you can go into more detail then the bible becomes your oyster that's what happens so let's uh, move forward and we're going to get a little bit more here let me um cut this over in the wrong place and Let's look at this next part. So now what we got to do, we got to look at uh, lasciviousness and make sure what's going on there and make sure right there we're going to take care of this part right there. So let's go and um, I'm gonna pull this part up. Let me pull this part up. And we're going to look at lasciviousness. We're going to look at lasciviousness. And we got to take a closer look at that and then we're going to do some exercises to make sure we understand what it is talking about so what we have to do in and how people actually sees lasciviousness how people see it lasciviousness is a word and is often used is often used and i want to make sure you guys take a note of this is often used is to describe someone who has a sexually or sexual attractive towards someone that's what most people use lasciviousness for and especially people use lasciviousness in a romantic context and we sit there and they think that's a good word to describe the word lasciviousness but the term lasciviousness is not the truth on using it that way. The term lasciviousness is truth in the Bible. But it usually always, what we just said before, it always going to associate when people use it or when they try to use it in that way, they're going to use it in towards a man, towards a woman, or a woman towards a man. Now, I just want to make sure we're real clear on something before I move forward. I don't adhere to homosexuality, so, in, in which is a hated conduct to God, and it's straight perversion. So I'm not going to be addressing lasciviousness as a homosexual or looking at it in a homosexual act because it is something that's not even permittable or it even spoken about. It's just is hit on and then he moves forward but some people will try to sit there and try to tie it directly to homosexuality homosexuality is perversion that's a perversion act which we'll be sitting some more on later on to where we'll see and on another, on another teaching where it's going to get into homosexuality and because homosexuality is 100 percent a perverted act and most and people will tell you that god loves the sinner but hates the sin and I can show you where God hates the sinner as well as the sin along with it. So we're going to be looking at that. But then the main thing is we want to look at the ultimate part in, on this word that's frequently used as being a lustful state. And the word is always used in casual conversation. You see people use it in formal context. And then you see where it's talking about this lustful thing. But, the, but when you're looking at lustful things and talking about lustful acts as such as that you have things such as you'll be lusting for money you can lust for uh, uh fame you can lust for some of your most ultimate goals that many people have in life those are lustful things and lustful are people who's constantly seeking different ways to get what they want that's lustful they constantly going to seek ways to get what they want and this can also lead, being lustful can also lead you strictly to greed or being greedy. That's what's going on. It's a sometimes and then it's also unscrupulous because it's crazy when people do it. It's really just really bad. So we want to look at that as a close. But greed 
as most people would say, greed always is bad, and that's not the truth. You have some good greed there. You have good greed there, and you have bad greed. But you got to understand what greed is. So it can also cause you, because if you have bad greed and you're being greedy, it can lead you to decisions that is not good, to which it can cause you to have, lose many things, including your life, if you're greedy for certain things. So these are things how we got to understand it. We, we got to start start tearing it down, start really understanding what, what these are. But for when you're seeing, um, say, um, an example, you know, for lustful, you know, when you see that, some people they sit there and they look at things and say, and a person might try to cheat another person out of money or cheat them out of property. They might try to get something that is not actually theirs. See, a lustful person will try to get a credit card from an innocent person because they lusting for something that they want to get, but they can't get it based on what they have. So they even steal your identity. They're the ones who are always looking to get the most out of life. But those are the ones that's always seeking to satisfy their own desires. That's lustful. Is that lasciviousness being in want? Is that lasciviousness being in want? And just to see where people are at right now, at this moment, just put in there and just put yes or no. Is that lustful acts? Is that lasciviousness? And I just want to see what people, people head is at right now. I just want to see what people head is at right now. So just put yes or no, and we're going to keep moving forward. But I just want to see where people, where people head is at, because we're going to find out exactly what's going on here. We're going to see what's going on here. we got a lot of people, we got a lot of yes. That's lustful people putting it in there. And I got, um, I have um, one no. I got Eva, not sure. And I got April, no. So we got a lot of yes and a bunch of, and only two no's and one um, I don't know what good is. Good is like you don't know. So I just take it you don't know. So the thing is, this is what I was just saying. As I described lustful, and those are lustful things. Now, I told you at the beginning, lust and lasciviousness is two different things. So when you look at this, and, and Brother Mathis, he's saying he's not sure, and tight, tight, and young okay we got a lot we got a few people starting to come in with some nose and the nose actually has it the nose is actually correct and one just saying he didn't understand the question was lasciviousness lustful was lasciviousness and lust and lustful one of the same things that was the question and and these are not the same so is a lustful act lasciviousness that's what talks to us. So that lets you know this is something that was taught to us. That lasciviousness is an act of lustful acting or lustful things. And that's not the truth. That's why I say I'm, well, I need to start going through this because I want to make sure that people in each and every one of us, if you're coming over here, we as the teachers over here, as the elders over here, we have to do better to make sure that you guys are properly educated and properly equipped to fight against these demons out here. To make sure that you are best equipped to, to enter into the kingdom of God. So we have to do better. And I'll be the first to sit there to say, you know, because I was shocked on that, on what I've seen this past week. So the same thing is, I have to do better. I don't care how we look at it, how we flip it, how we script it out. People didn't know. We just got to do better. It's, it's a zero-sum game here. So it's easier for me to where I can go through each word and show you exactly what it is and how it works. So now when you see it, 
you can see the act being committed and you'll know what it is. You could call it out. And and just to say the point on it, and, and, and this again, same thing, like I said, we're going to sit there and let people still understand a little bit more. Have you ever, when you was younger, you might have had your mom or your dad, they might have seen a kid that you want to be around and you want to hang around. And people, if you comment in there, you find to do that on this, what I'm talking about. And they'll sit there and they'll tell you ahead of time, that's a bad, that's, that's a bad kid to get around. No, don't, don't you hang around him. He's bad news. And they don't even know the kid. But they looking at what his acts are, what his acts are, and what his attentions are when he do things. And they sitting there just seeing that. They sitting there, that's, that's, that's a bad character. Don't, don't, don't hang around him. And... Some of us will sit there, but mom, you don't even know him. Or dad, you don't even know. It don't matter. They know the act. They know the drivers behind those type of acts. They know that. So that's the same thing what we have to end up doing. We have to sit there and now we need to know what lasciviousness looks like. So when we read it, we we'll know what it is without even seeing the word there. And, and what that'll do, that'll help us when we start studying. And besides somebody sitting there saying, we'll tell you what, what is lasciviousness? Oh, let me go to this verse and let me go to that verse. And it got lasciviousness there. This is lasciviousness. No, that's not lasciviousness. We need to describe the act, the functioning of what lasciviousness is, and then we can actually push it out. Then we can find it in a lot of different places. You'll find it all over the Bible where it's talking about lasciviousness. We'll see it automatically. So that's what we that's what we are looking to do to help each and every one of us to move forward. So let's look at it because lasciviousness is not lustful. <laughs> it sounds close, but it's talk, talking about two different things. I get it when people use it, but it's not saying the same thing. We're going to look at it. We're going to we're going to go through it and we're going to get the better understanding of this. So let's go over here to first Peter. We're going to look at first Peter chapter four. And then same thing, we got some homework with this that we're going to do right here, right here today. And we're going to do it while we're online. We're going to make sure that people understand it to know and understand how it functions. So we got to look at this in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to pick it up at verse 3. Verse 3. And it's telling you right here. For the time past of our lives may suffice us to wrath, to have wrath, the will of Gentiles. He's telling you right up front what was, and he's telling you when we walked in lasciviousness. Now I'm gonna show you the key where you're gonna see even a problem. You see lasciviousness, then you see comma lust. If lust and lasciviousness was the same thing. One, that should throw a red flag for you, and you know those two can't mean the same thing because it said it was just what it said, we walked in lust or we walked in lasciviousness. But you see, lasciviousness and lust is together. Excess of wine, rivalings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. But everybody understand that right now. I want to make sure everybody understand it as we end this class. So I want to make sure that you're clearly getting what's going on. You see how lasciviousness and lust is one of the, they take, they right behind each other. So it can't mean the same thing. Cause if it did, you only will see one. You only see one of them. You wouldn't see both. Everybody get that. I want to make sure everybody understand that. Good, 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 good. So we got it. Good, good. Good. All right. So we got everybody, they doing it. And, and most people just put a yes or no. We're good with that. Just yes or no that we're good. <clears throat> so that's the point of this. That was the point of it to make sure that you see that. Now, what we want to do is look at something. I want to take you somewhere to where we're going to get this. We're going to go to Romans. We're going to look at Romans chapter one, but we're going to scroll down to verse 24. We got to see what was recorded in Paul. Verse 24, we're going to see what's recorded in Paul, in the writings of Paul. We're going to see some of the same thing, and you're going to see which giving up a whole different ball game. Watch what happens, and then we're going to look at something. 
It says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Did anybody catch that? Did anybody catch what happened there? We should have caught what happened there because he, because it actually, it distinctly told us something that we needed to know right then. He said, wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through their lust of their own hearts. It's a comma. So let's take lust and focus lust, but that's all we need to understand there. It says through their lust, and we can stop right there, comma that right there and put to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Now we see it's talking a little bit more direct because through lust, we see in something that's happening. We see in this. So men was lusting to dishonor their bodies. So they doing a, they doing an actual act. They doing an actual act on something. This is what I want to focus on to where we're going to see how this actually is playing out. And you see where they're going to, they willing to dishonor themselves with this. They are willing to dishonor themselves with this through lusting because lusting is doing something. Watch what happens. I want to show you a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more here. I want to show you an act. I'm going to show you an act of doing that on what they're trying to push an act out. We're going to look at um, Genesis and we're going to see what was written down in Genesis chapter 19. But we want to look at verse four. We want to focus in on verse four. And it says this. It says this. It says, but before they laid down the men of the city. So this is talking about the issue with Lot, where he had those messengers to come into his house. And this is an issue that went on. And it's telling you right here, it says the men of the city, even men of Sodom compassed the house round, both old and young. So it didn't matter. It was old men and young men included. All the people of every quarter. But watch what happens when you see what, it, what went on. And this is what you're going to see. It says, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are are the men which came into thee this night. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. That we may know them. Are you seeing what's going on here? So now we're looking at this and you seeing now these men wanted to know them as they came under Lot's roof and lasciviousness is speaking of more, but you can see here the two men that came into Peter in verse three and four and three is it saying that because of the time passed in time suffice wrought Gentiles walked in lasciviousness, lust, lust. Now we seeing a little bit more. We seeing a little bit more what's going on. We we separating it and we trying to separate the the the, the two. We're trying to get the two separated to understand and, and how it is actually working. Another one that will help us where, where we really get problems at, but we want to make sure we understand it. I'm going to show you one in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 16. We want to understand a couple of things here. And we're going to look at verse 16 to find out exactly how this was working out. Now, this is talking about a lot, but I want it, but we're going to tear it down because we want to understand what was happening. So we're going to tear this down completely to see how this was actually working out. We're going to read it and then let's tear it down. We're going to read it. Then we're going to tear it down. And, and the main thing is, is the same thing like I, I tell people all the time, but what we do here and, and same thing, like people will sit there and talk this trash about, oh, uh, 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 this master her bread stuff, and people still have haven't figured out it's a it's a profession is not something that's required to teach the Bible, but it's a profession. I'm a pastor, but 
what I do as a Hebraist, that is a profession on, it's a specialist of the Hebrew culture and its language. And just to let some people know who just came over here, because people would get that mixed up and, it's, and it, it's, it's, it really comes down to comical. It really comes down and it boils down to comical because you have people who are not even a novice, not even a novice of the Bible, and then they sit there thinking that they know something of old scripture and they and they be they playing in this field and the field is 400 miles away in the field that they that they should be playing in but we want to look at this here to understand in isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16 it says moreover the spirit of god said what did he say because the daughters of zion are haughty including walk with stretched forth necks including wanting eyes walking and menacing as comparing comparing they go including making the tinkling of their feet we got to unpack all that because it, it's telling us exactly what's going on it's telling us exactly what's going on so we got to understand it we got to understand it now we got to see this is because of the exploitation of our own ignorance this is what we do this is exploitation of our ignorance. We not we not getting that. And and in fact, you can sit there and see exploitation of our ignorance. This is why you can go to most black TV shows, and you'll see exploitation of homosexuality and all type of perversions in our in our shows. And and people will sit there and tolerate them and look at them. It don't matter. You you tolerate it. You look at it. But then you'll go to dominant other race shows where you won't see none of that there. None of it. But you'll see it prevalent in ours. And this is this is crazy. This is why a lot of times um, people will see where I look at um, I look at uh, Asian related shows. I look at. Uh, shows over there in, in Philistine. I look at shows in Turkey. I look at shows at that, and you won't see no homosexuality nowhere. You won't see it nowhere, pushed out nowhere. You only see it in us. But when you're looking at Hadi, Hadi, in Hadi, we we want to make sure we write it down. Is Hadi is being proud and ignorant. I mean, not proud and, proud and arrogant. That's what it's actually talking about. When you're talking about hottie, you're talking about proud and arrogant. So it's telling you, moreover, the Spirit of God said, because the daughters of Zion are proud and arrogant. That's what that's saying. We're going to unpack each one and take a little bit at a time. So we being proud and we being arrogant. Two, they walked. Meaning, we followed. We walked. We followed What? We follow with desires, is what that's saying. We walked with stress forth next. So we need to know what these these things are. These stress, these stress forth next. The stress is a stiffen. It's all the saying. It's stiffen. Because no matter what, we're gonna walk with that desire. We're gonna go that direction. It's stiffen. Stretch forth. So stiffen is just stretch forth. But then we know next, meaning our, our ways. So if our next is stretch forth, it's stiffen, say, to go left. We only going to go left. I don't care. We're not going to turn to the right. We're not going to turn to the to the north. We're going to go straight the way we was going because it's stiffen. Stretch forth next. This is what we do. No matter what, we're going to make sure we get it. That's what that's saying. And it goes on more. It says, including, including wanting. See, wanting, people sit there wanting stuff. No, but wanting means deceitful. Deceitful. We want to understand that. Deceitful. See, because when you want stuff, you do deceitful things. When you're just wanting things. And it's telling you, Warning eyes, meaning deceitful understandings. That, so that's why those two are together. 
That's why those two words is clicked together. Just so you can see warning is one thing, but when you see deceitful understanding, they got a bad understanding on how they're going to try to get it. And you see more what it's telling you. It says walking, desiring, menacing. The menacing is even worse because we, we carefully seeing how we can do it. Because that's all menacing is. Menacing means we carefully doing something. They carefully trying to craft this out. You, have you ever noticed um, uh, 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 people who really want to do something really shady? They try to plan it. Have you ever have you ever noticed that? That's just a note you can put in there as we're going. But that's what people do. When they really want to do something, they 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 will they try to plan it out. They really try to plan that out. And they're gonna to try to calculate it. They try to calculate that. Menacing. That's what they do. They carefully as they go with it. They they carefully setting that up. So it's saying menacing comparing they go. So they, they setting it up that way. But watch what happens. But watch what happens as it's going. As they go, and it's saying making, tinkling, tinkling <laughs> of their desires, their feet. So it's making tinkling of their, of their desires. Sorry, I, I, I read it different ways, so don't just look over and pray for me. So I read it different, but I just mainly, most I just tell you what it is as but they do the tinkling. So we got to know tinkling is the noise. Now to show you how tinkling works, I want to show you how tinkling, that word that I got highlighted, I want to show you how that word works. And, and again, you can put in yes or no, which, what we want to find out from each and every one of them. The same thing is when you sit there and have you ever been around somebody or you've seen some people around some people who's, they can be well off or something. And then you see the person that's with them and they in this warning they're in this warning mode, deceitful understanding. And as they sitting there doing this, the first thing come out of their mouth, they're going to do some tinkling. They're going to make some noise. They're going, man, I sure wish I can have one of those. Man, I sure wish I was able to get one of those. Man, I sure glad you can get one of those. Have you, have you ever ran into that? I tell you what, I, I, got, a, <laughs> I got an in-law cousin. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, he do his tinkling so weird. And I'm going to tell you about it as people putting it in there. But people here, but I'm going to tell you this weird, weird one. He was sitting there and he was telling people. <laughs> he's telling people and he's tinkling. He's tinkling this. He's saying, Ron, tell you what, I don't care about money. I don't care about this. So then he even had the nerve to tell us. He said, Ron, tell you what, if I hit the lotto, and he's telling my wife, if I hit the lotto, I'm going to give you about $250,000. If I hit the lotto, he's tinkling. The tinkling is because he's letting you know he's in warning. So he's deceitful understanding. He's doing this in a menacing way. He's being very careful on how he's doing it. Now, let's say if she played the, the lotto or if I played the lotto and then I hit it. That comes into play because he'll sit there and say, now, even though I'm a cousin, you guys should give me something because if I hit it, I already told you, I would have gave you this. That's the focus of it. That was the point of it. That was the point of him telling you that. That was the point of the tinkling. He going to make just that little bitty noise. That's why you have a lot of family members say, yeah, oh man, if I... Have you ever had somebody say, man, if I had a million dollars, man, I'd give you, I'd give you, I'd give you 10 grand. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard that? People say, man, if I had, I hit, I'd give you this much. That's tinkling. <laughs> that's tinkling, but that's in warning in their understanding. And they just doing it in a menacing way. That's all that is. That's all it is. It's just in a menacing way. So if they hit it, they probably wouldn't give you a dime. But if you hit it, they already tinkle to you. And some people might even get the guilt trip. Like, well, you know, such and such, I'm going to go on and give him something because, you know, 
I already know he gonna do this, and I don't want to hear it. So I'm going to give him this. Yeah, because he was tinkling. And he carefully laid that out. That's what people do. So that's how that works. And 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 when they do that, you sit there and see what's going on. And you see even more so when you look at uh, verse 14. I'm going to show you something. We're going to go to verse 14. Same place, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 14. Actually, I don't want all of that. I don't want all of that. And we want to look at verse 14. And it, and it tells us this. It says, The Spirit of God will enter into judgment, into doctrines and teachings with the ancients, with the elders of his people. This is what he's going to do. And it says, Including the princesses, which these are the, are the rulers and the leaders, thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor in your Houses, that's what they did. This is what we did. Because they're using the warning of doing things. And they're getting you to do things for you. For them. And this is the point of that. That was the point of the whole subject on why they, why people would tell you things. Oh man, I wish, oh man, I wish, I wish this, I wish that. It's tinkling. There was a tinkling, and they're doing it in a menacing way. You see this also. Um, we're going to go another place. We're going to go to Second Peter. We're going to go to Second Peter chapter two, verse eighteen. And he says more. It says, "For when they speak great swelling words of vanity." I'm telling you, they're going to speak great. Oh, if I, I'll tell you what, you guys might have never heard it, but I didn't heard this before. I'm talking about, and it was directed to me from relatives. They said, man, if I hit it, you know, where the lotto would be like $500 million. They said, man, if I hit it, man, I'm going to give you like $5 million. Have you ever had somebody tell you that? Man, if I hit it, I get the 500, man, I'm just going to get you just out of the blue. I didn't have people who just friends. They'll tell you, man, if I hit it, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this. Just out of the blue. That's tinkling. And they're going to speak great words, swelling words of vanity. This is what they do. And it's and it and it and it's telling you what they're gonna do. It's telling you what they're gonna do. It says they allure through the lust of the flesh. They're doing that for the lust of the flesh through much wantonness, those were clean escape from them who lived in error. And it's telling you right up there. They these people are living in error. These people is living in error. And these are lusts. That's lust. That's lust. But we need to see lasciviousness. That's the focus. We need to see lasciviousness. Because Wantonness is whorish and foolish desires of sin. But what we want to do is look at the thought of the act. The thought of the act. That's what we want to understand. The thought of the act. Let's see how this is going to play out for us. We got to look at how this is going to play out for us. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 6 and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. And you're going to see this here and you're going to sit there and see and you're going to see a couple of things happening right here. A couple of things happening right here. 
it says it says this here. It says, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, including that every imagination of the thought, every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Lasciviousness 101. That's lasciviousness one on one. We, we want to understand that because those are thoughts. Those are thoughts on what you want to commit. You haven't did it, but you want to commit them. That's lasciviousness 101. And let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper with this. And we're going to go to Second Corinthians. And um, pick it up at 12, verse 21. 12, verse 21. You see, you're going to see everything there again. It says, and least when I come again, my God will humble me among you, including that I shall be well. Many which have sinned already. Many have sinned already. Remember what the focus is. The focus is lasciviousness. But many people have sinned already is the focus and if they sin already watch what happens and have not repented they have not remembered of the uncleanness they didn't remember the uncleanness of that including fornication including lasciviousness you see the act isn't there you the lust it says, which have committed. When you sitting there and you thinking of that, that's why Yahweh I said, if you look upon a woman, you have sinned already. That's why he gets into that. Because the act is what you want to commit in your head. You just you just seeing it through. You seeing it through in your head. So with the focus of lasciviousness. How can we make sure this act, this act is going to be committed? That's the focus. And actually we was in it earlier, earlier in the earlier teaching, but we want to see the act actually being committed 101. We got to see the act committed 101. We'll find that in Jude verse four. We'll find that in Jude verse four. We're going to see it's actually committed 101 right here. And it tells us, it says, for there are certain men crept in unawares. But watch how this act is being committed, because this is where we're going to get some homework and some different different stuff from it. Not homework, but we're going to do them all here. And he's telling us this. Who were before old of old ordained in this condemnation. See what he's saying? Into condemnation ungodly men turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. You see how they did? Tinkling, warning. They haven't did anything, but they just telling you if this happens, this is what we'll do. Lasciviousness 101. So you understand what's going on. You see the thoughts that, that, that they voicing. Okay, they turn in the grace of God, denying the grace of God, and they send the grace of God into lasciviousness. And it says, including denying the only creator God, including our creator of salvation of the anointed one. This is what they're talking about doing. So, with that being said, with that being said, I want to I got a question. With that being said, that comes with a question and that comes with some work, which we've got to go to work on. We got to go to work on. And I want to put this up there. And we want to sit there and see what's happening there. So now what we want to do is look at this. How was this thing going to be committed? 
So let's let, let me go here. Let me go here. We're gonna we're gonna put this up on the board. And what I want you to do, you see on the screen we got Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty one. We seen that verse there. We seen that verse there. We just seen it. I'm gonna show it back to you, to where we can look at it. And I want you to see it. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, chapter twelve, verse twenty one. It's right here. Least when I come again unto you, come come again, my God, humble me among you that they shall be well many, which have sinned already, and have not repented of uncleanness, including fornication, including lasciviousness. So the question becomes, and I'm going to pause for a minute because I'm going to let you guys get time to do it. You see it right there. You can see it right here on the board. You can see it right here on the screen. You can see it. And it's saying, how was this act? How was this act being committed? That's, that's the question here. How is this act being committed? So now what I want to know is how was that act of lasciviousness being committed? So the main thing is we can't put up a poll, but you can put in there and, and don't pop a verse in there because somebody will, oh, a verse. And if you can't explain it, then don't put a verse in there because you because just run into a verse just as a waste of time. Be able to explain it first, then you can run to a verse. So I'm gonna give you guys about I'm gonna I'm gonna take the time, I'm gonna wait about about four or five minutes. And I wanna see what, what we're gonna come up with. I'm gonna see what we're gonna come up with. So we on right now I got uh we got right now is three fifty eight. Okay, so again, people are not paying attention to what I said. We got the thought, the thought, okay, in the mind, okay, we're not, okay, so again, we need to hold up one second. So again, I'm asking you, what act is being committed? All you putting in there is a thought. I'm asking you, what act was being committed on that on lasciviousness don't just give me a thought this is what i'm saying see people this is this is this is where we have a problem at so let me let me let me let me see how further we're gonna go with this and let me see what we're gonna do let me see what we're gonna get here And we're looking at that one. It says, at least we come again through this uncleanness. I just want to sit there and see what happens. I want to see what happens. And... These, these, these little one-liners, you literally you're wasting your time. These little one-liners is wasting time. Let me see. So from what I see, only one person can try to explain it, and I see this one person said, imagination in our hearts of the evil acts, not remembering our past. We got one person actually trying to explain it, and we see another one. I think they ran into actual sin through their mind. Conditions uh, met. Yeah, private interpretation of false doctrine. Okay, so we're not being lying, telling someone you will share the, the winnings with them. I don't know what that means. Because I'm asking you, I'm asking specifically about this verse. I'm asking specifically about this verse. And 
they did not repent of their wrong. No. No. Call it, call it envy, envy, uh, speaking evil of brethren. Okay. I want you guys to look at this verse really good. It's saying, at least when I come again, my my God will humble me among you that ye shall be well many when have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness, including fornication, including lasciviousness, which they have committed. This is a clear question that, that's being asked. What act is they committing in lasciviousness? And, and we're not getting it. Okay, have sinned. Okay, if you're just going to do one-liners, don't put anything there. If you're just going to do one-liners, it says, uh, based on a thought within their heart and their mind, on what you want to happen. Yeah, uh, Brother Jenkins, yeah, you're right around there, and, and you're, right, you're hitting it around the park. You're getting around there. Each man was tempted when he was drawn away in lust. No, Brother Jenkins is close to what's going on. The act of creating the thought of sin in the heart. Yeah, uh, Brother Ben Simmons is close on it also. And uh, some who have sexual drive to some, no, no. Committing wicked thoughts of, of the heart. Yeah. They transgress and did not repent for what they did. No, you talking about another act. Plotting thoughts, a sinful acts, fornication and uncleanness. Yeah, but we want to, plotting the thoughts, and, and yeah, to commit the fornication and uncleanness, yeah, you, you kind of wrapping everything into one. That's, that's, that's pretty good. But, but we want to see uh, the lasciviousness on, on mainly what it is. So you, you honed in on it. And that's uh, Sister Williams. You honed in on it. You 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 hidden you hidden you hitting on all you hitting on seven cylinders right now. You hitting on seven cylinders right now. I just want to make sure you drive that in. And they would have their own sins come to come to them, but didn't but did not turn from their ways. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting ready. Uh, I'm gonna get ready to start putting it in there. Not repenting our wicked thoughts. So I'm gonna show you guys what's gonna happen. And uh the act of being greedy and they okay, I don't know what you're doing there. And Paul was being crafty. Uh Anthony Hicks, you need to you need to just don't say anything. <laughs> you don't need to say absolutely nothing. Um the act of being sorrowful. And showing uncontrollable desires, yeah, but but it's getting close. It's getting close, getting close. And uh, they are not remembered. Don't care as long as they get what. Yeah, a lot of you guys is hitting around it, but we want to see exactly what was going on. So we're getting people. They starting to. You guys are starting to hone in on it. Hone in, hone in, hone it. Which is which is which is pretty good. Yeah, premeditate. See these one-liners. You 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 kind of just wasting time doing these one-liners. This it's a waste. It's a waste of my time. And it's a uh, in a division of doctrines, arguments about belief. Yeah, you guys are hitting around it. But I want you. But I'm gonna show you something on what you got to do. Cause a lot of you guys are starting to really hone in on what's going on. A lot of you guys are really honing in on what's going on. They committed these acts without any truth. In their life, uh, that's an argument to where we don't want to join into. So that's see, because you want to be able to nail them. This that's an argument. Then that's brother Daniel. That that's an argument that can happen. And uh, not remembering their wicked thoughts and taking pride uh, of their sin. Yeah, like you hitting around, but we want to we want to hit that lasciviousness. We want to hit that. You want to hit it. And most people they 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 getting into it. In imagination in their hearts and their mind uh, that are contrary to the word to the word that have not repented. You actually hitting it. You you hitting on you hitting a cylinder, and 
you hitting it right now. And that's brother John Carlos. You, you hitting it right now. And what is actually going on? That's lasciviousness one-on-one. That's lasciviousness one-on-one. And, uh, okay. Yeah. They are covered. Okay. So again, we go right back to this. And when you sitting there saying they're covered in breaker, now I'm going to ask you why. Same thing. If you came in the back, I'm going to ask you why. But what people were starting to do, they starting to explain themselves to where they saying what's going on. So the main one is we're going to look at, um, I'm going to see if anybody else come in besides, um, brother John Carlos in his heart desire and not asking for forgiveness. Good, good. So what I'm going to do, if everybody can hold up one second, if everybody can hold up, we're going to, we're going to look at uh brother John Carlos and I want to take brother Marshall's and um, sister Terry Clark, uh, the thoughts, what they want to do. We can actually use that one too. We can actually, so we want everybody to stop putting in for, for, for one minute. And we want to, we want we want to go from there. We want to take I want to take those three. I want to take those three. And I want to take those three. And people still putting in. No, see, we're seeking Christ without without the works need for repentance. No, so that's not the thing. So what I want to do, I want to um. I want to I want to take this. Uh, I want to take um. If you guys just hold up, because I want to take Brother John Carlos, so I'm trying to get rid of some to where we can, um, where we can deal with this on a on a on a straight on a straight basis. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there, I'm deleting them, but people still putting them in. Like, but I'm only want to take these few. Few. Yeah, I appreciate that, Sister Bernadette. Appreciate it. So, what we want to do? I want to look at Brother John Carlos. And brother, brother Marshall, and Sister Clark. I want to look at those. So what we want to do? We want to get this, this, this in there, and we're gonna put this back up. Now, what I want you guys to do is look at what's going on here. Now it's telling you, at least the, at least when I come again, my God will humble me among you, including I shall be well many which have sinned already. So they sinned already. So they committed something already. And it says, have not repented of the uncleanness, including fornication and lasciviousness. So they didn't, they didn't repent of that. Now, the same thing is what we were looking for. And you don't have to have the word in there, but we can now let's look at brother John Carlos. He's saying the imaginations of the hearts and the mind that are contrary to the word, but have not repented. That's what Paul is saying here. He just reworded it. He did a, did a good job. And then the same thing with Brother Marshall, heart desiring and not asking for forgiveness. Exactly. Yeah. You see it right here. They have not repented. So they don't have to ask for it, but they not repented for this. In the thoughts that over what they wanted to do. Now, what I want you to do, I wanted to go up a little bit. <clears throat> we want to go up a little bit. We're going to look at something. We're going to look at verse 19. I'm going to show you something because I'm going to show you what they needed. And, and they, they're actually saying it. It's saying, again, thank ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. For we speak before God in Christ that, but we do all things dearly beloved for your edifying. So they want to actually educate you. That's what he's saying. For the desire least when I come, Ye, sh ye shall no f not find you such as I would, including that I should be found unto you such as ye would not. Least there be debates. Understand what's going on. Because now they want to argue over some certain things. Envyings. Wrath. Strife. Backbiting. Whispering, swellings, tumults. This is what's going to happen. This is why I said the imagination of the heart is contrary. That's what that's what he was talking about, and that's what they was desiring things. So now, this is why when you when people start immediately start putting it in, we didn't look at the scripture. That's why I said 
look at what's going on before you start commenting. Doing these one-liners is not going to help you out. Trying to hurry up and get something out there don't help you. All it does, it makes it makes you stumble over scripture. And that's not good. You you want to make sure you read and understand what's going on. So let's go back up. And we're going to look at verse 1. And we're going to find out why Paul has lasciviousness in there and this stuff was contrary to the word of God and they was desiring things and not asking for forgiveness. We're going to find out this. It says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to vision and revelations of the creator. I know a man in Christ above 14 years, whether in the body, I can't tell, or whether out of the body, I can't tell. God knoweth. Now, that's not up for argument. That's not up for argument. But you have men. Actually, let me pull this over here. I'm going to put this over here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You have men doing this. Some men going to be envying, strife, backbiting, whispering, swellings, and all that. What Paul is saying. They'll argue over this stuff because Paul is carrying a lot of weight. But watch what happens. It says, I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is which it not lawful for man to utter. Now, you got these same guys sitting there. What they going to do? They're going to debate this. Guys are going to debate this stuff against Paul. That's why Paul has to talk to him. Because they'll debate this stuff. And you'll see as you read, as you read this in Corinthians, this is what was going on. And it says, it says more. It says, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but my infirmities. So Paul is just going to glory of his weaknesses. For though I would desire to glory, I should not be a fool. Why? Because people was going to debate. They're going to be doing envyings, wrath and strife and backbitings, whisperings and swellings. All the other stuff. Hey, I can do this. I can do that. The same thing. We're going to see. We're going to see how I act to that. And this is. For I would desire the glory, but I would not be a fool. For I say, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Least any man should think of me. You see what he's saying? Any man think of me above that which he seeth me to be or that heareth of me. They're going to they're gonna cause this issue. This is what's going to happen. Let's go down a little bit more. Now, and you can see this lasciviousness kicking in because people are going to put out little, little, little quirks, little things about him. In fact, um, I want you to remember this. Keep this in mind. In uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse 1. Remember Miriam? Miriam said something about Moses. Same thing. Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman, somebody he married way before he came back. And, and it says, and uh, spake against Moses, the Ethiopian, who he had married, he had married an Ethiopian woman. What did, what, what, what did, what did they say about that? You're going to see it right here. And they said, have the spirit of God indeed in work spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us in the spirit of God heard it? Because now they're going to try to normalize Moses. The same thing Paul is trying to take care of right now. That's why Paul even later said, I speak more tongues than you all. Because he knows this issue is there. Let's go down a little bit more. It says, least I should exalt myself above his measure, though abundance of revelations. He's telling you abundance of revelations. That they will wrath, their envy, and their strife, their whisper. And cause a bunch of confusion. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So he's telling you right up front. I, I know a whole lot of stuff, but I'm giving a thorn in the flesh. 
the messenger of Satan buffeted me. Least I should be exalted above measure. So he's sitting there saying, I can really break you off, but I don't. He buffeted me so I to because I can exalt myself over you guys easy. Easily I can do this. But he's not doing it. It says, For this thing I besought the creator thrice. Three times he did that. That I might that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul is sitting there saying, I don't have to debate. I don't have to envy. I don't have to wrath with you. I don't have to strife. I don't have to do no backbiting. I don't have to do no whispering. I don't have to be swelling or do any kind of confusion. I don't have to do this. But he gets better. It says, most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Because then you know the most high is working with you. That the power of Christ rested upon me. That's what he's guaranteed of. And it tells you more. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reapproaches, what they're going to be doing, in necessities of persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. He's telling you right up front what's going on. And we're going to find out where this is. See, because where you see what Paul was trying to tell you what you need to look for is right up there. That's what we should have been looking for. Grace. Because when lascivious, these evil thoughts was being committed, everything else, we should have been looking for grace the entire time, the entire time that should have been happening. But let's just uh, look at a little bit more here. And it says, uh, most gladly for that reason, I will rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ that rested upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reapproaches and necessities in persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. I become a fool in glory. I become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me for I ought to have been commended of you for in nothing am I behind in very chiefest apostles thought I be nothing. Paul is telling you right up front. Why? Because this is going on. It's telling you right here what was going on. Because people, people are going to envy because why? They want that position. How they want that position? The imagination of their heart is contrary to the word of God. It shouldn't. What, 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 what you going? What you going to sit there and talk about a chief apostle? You see what I'm saying? What you going to sit there and talk about? Oh, I'm better than this one. The whispering, the swellings, the tumults. So he tell you. He's, so he glories in that stuff. And he's telling you right up front, I glory. I compelled all and commend me nothing. Behind, I am behind the very chiefest, the chiefest apostles. Thought I be nothing. Some of the same ones he checked. Because <laughs> he checked Peter. Checked Peter. Peter got checked by him. And he said, truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and, and mighty deeds. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches? Except it be in you know, that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me this wrong. <laughs> That's a cold, I'm the, he a cold piece of work right there. Cold piece of work right there. He's telling you right up front. He said, truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. For what it is, for what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches? 
you as an inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome unto you. Forgive me if this wrong. <laughs> That's a mic drop on Paul. He says, remember, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children are not to lay out the parent, but the parent for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you through the more abundantly I love you. The less I be loved. I'm telling you, Paul breaking, he breaking these people off. But be it so, I did not burdensome. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. Caught him in a lie. Caught him in a bold-faced, unadulterated lie. Why? Because they're speaking the things they really want. So it goes on here. It says, Did I make gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you, desiring Titus, including with him sent his brother? Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk, walk we not in the same spirit? Walk we not in the same steps? Again, thank ye that were that 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 we excuse yourselves unto you. We speak before God in Christ, but we did all things uh, darlingly, darling, dearly beloved for your edifying. For I fear, least when I come, I should not find you such as I would, including that I would be found unto you and such you would not least there be debates envying wrath strife backbiting whispering swellings all these imaginations these things of their hearts because they, they, they don't want to put Paul in that position that's what this was talking about that's what this was talking about the entire time. Lasciviousness. It's thoughts that they was already having. So what they have to do, they have to kind of throw it out there. <laughs> they have to put that out there. So they can get so they can get what they want. Lasciviousness 101. That's I showed you that the first time. So what we need to, we need to turn to grace and mercy and favor unto God. And what they didn't do, they didn't do that. They turned to lasciviousness. Besides in grace and mercy of God, they turned to lasciviousness. Denying God. Denying him. It's telling you, it says, I come again that my God be humble, uh, be uh, humble me among you, including I shall be well many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, lasciviousness, which they have committed. What did they commit? He's telling you right up there what they did. He already know it was debates. Why do you think he got it in there? It's there for a reason. He's not sitting there trying to make up something. He's telling you this is what was going on. Envying, wrath, strife, backbiting, whispering, swellings, tumults. That's why he's saying he's telling you this because this is what they was doing. Putting out those little, putting out those little Little, 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 um, with them little seeds. This is what they was doing. So, so that's why I say we, we got another, we got another exercise we're going to do on that. But I want to make sure, I want to make sure, and that's lasciviousness right up front. So the same thing, fornication, uncleanness, all of it's uncleanness. How, how is that clean and you, 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 <laughs> you wrathing against your brother? How is that, how is that clean and you whispering against your brother? How is that clean and you making commotions? You making all these tumults? How, how is this not fornication and you sitting there, yeah, man, if I get in this position, 
you in. <laughs> you in. That's all what this is. That's all what this is. Everybody, everybody understand that so far. Cause we got another, we got another one we're gonna be doing in one second. So I just want to make sure we all, we all understand it. But the same thing, uh, if people, if you want to put in these little one liners, you're not looking through to really see what it is. Really, you 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 hurting yourself because a lot of people put in a lot of one line. Oh, it's this, it's that, and you're not even seeing what it. You're just guessing what it is. That's a, that's a waste of time. Let me see. Um, and see, and if you don't know, it's best to say you don't know to where we can keep going through it. But some people are gonna say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then later on, we'll go through lasciviousness, and then the first thing they say, oh, I I thought it was you know, okay. Then that was your fault because you choose to do it your way. Just trying to see what's going on here. And the same thing is, and if we got this one here, if we got if we got Brother Bishop Elder Jojo, who 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 just waking up and and then all of a sudden he want to answer, we don't need Brother Jojo. We don't need Brother Jojo for anything, cause he'll just be waking up. He'll just be waking up, and we don't need that. And no problem, um, uh, Sister uh, Nikita. We're going to be doing another uh, um, example, and I, I, be, I can go more in detail on it. So we're good there. We're good there. So I'm just trying to see um, what we got there, what we got there, and make sure um, everybody else is everybody else is good. So what we're going to do, we're going to start the next one. We're going to look at the next example. We're going to look at another example. And this other example is a little bit more direct. And we already had it. It's already before us. Let me um, put it back up there. Because we just, what's the worst part is we're already looking at them. And we're going to sit there and see it. So let me pull this up and we'll see it right there. And uh, and that's it. If we're looking at Jude, and we're gonna take that over there, and we want to see Jude, and it's uh, verse four, and it tells us, and it says, and there were certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained of this condemnation. They was ordained of this condemnation ungodly men turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness. They turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and including denying the only creator God, including our Lord, our creator of salvation, the anointed. So again, what we want to know, where was the act being committed? What act was being committed? And I want to see, now these can be some almost some one liner, but don't come put in something that, that makes absolutely no sense. And, and and look at it and don't just try to, oh, let me, I just put this, because you that shows me you're really not a study. you just trying to be the first one up there and still be wrong, technically. So this is the next one. We're going to wait, we're going to pause a minute. We're going to see what people are going to do and see if they have it. We're gonna sit there and see what they have and see see how this comes out. And make sure because we're gonna we're gonna go a little bit more thorough on this one to make sure that people can actually see it and find out what this was. How was they committing lasciviousness? How was that being committed in Jude? You got Jude right there up on the board. I can put it even up there a little bit closer if need be. And that's that's it right there. And if you want to sit there and see it, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of dark. I need to change that. I can put it up that way. We can sit there and see how this goes and we'll see what's going on. So, so let's see what's happening there. You're going to see it going to go out. So how is this being committed? How was, what was being committed there? We want to understand what was being committed there in lasciviousness. We want to understand that. I want you to look at it, and then I want you to put in there, put in the chat to what it is. Put in the chat, what is it? 
What act was being committed for lasciviousness? What act was being committed for lasciviousness? So we're going to give it a minute. And then we're going to go through it. So we're going to give it a minute. Then we're going to go through it. Some of these on this one here is almost some one-liners. And we're going to see how they did it. So some of them is like a one-liner on what's going on. Once, uh, like, like three or four words, two or three words on some of this. But see what happens. Yeah. And no. And no, brother Ray Ray, that's not that's not that's not the focus of it. So that one's off. That one was off. And they were not that don't make no sense. Uh they were they were not Jews, they they snuck in. No, that's not what that is. So we're not looking at the verse. Pharisees running the Pharaoh. I don't know where you got that from. So most of them I'm just going to delete as it's not there. I'm just going to delete them as we... I want you to look at what it is. We want to look at them what it is and what's going on. And you have an... Um, and it's denying the... Denying God's grace, denying God. Mm, it's more more off for that, but but a little bit you know. Uh, turn it, turning the truth of God into a curse. You no. Know? And um, they use their unrighteous ways to teach. They use their unrighteous ways to teach against the ways of God. Yeah, that's actually. That's actually a yeah. That's that's saying it. You saying it, and uh, you saying what it is, and uh, denying the only Lord and Creator of our. Okay, no, they were being greedy. No, knowing the truth and willful denying the truth for their own truth. Oh, uh, that's a kind of roundabout way of trying to say something, and uh, false teachers and. And commandments of men, mm, yeah, these these are roundabout ways. Uh, the one, the one brother, uh, G, they use their unrighteous ways to teach against the ways of God. That's pretty direct, and but that and that's correct. And I'm um, not believing in the acts of God in times past. No, ungodly men, liars, and denying the truth. Um. Yeah, but how they was doing it, that's the main thing. So, you so yeah, that's uh, Brother uh, Jenkins. That's that's one way of doing it. They was false teachers and came in teaching doctrines, which was turning the Word of God into wicked ways. Yeah. So, uh, contrary to God, wicked thoughts, not, not repenting. No. Uh, denying was right in God's eyes. But they would, they would anyway. Um, yeah, they doing that, but 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 it's what's what's how they doing. We are gonna see that, cause we want to be a little bit more direct. A little bit more direct. They didn't want the favor. They didn't want uh, the favor from God. They didn't want favor from God. They want to glorify among men. Yeah, that's that's the outcome they wanted. That's the outcome they wanted. They were teaching a wrong doctrine, commandments of men, and uh, not through the faith of Christ. Yeah, they, they was doing that also. So we're getting people to starting to hone in on it. And uh, false teachers to teach contrary to the word of God, making his laws to be hated. Yeah, they doing that 100%. And uh, elders gossiping and teaching against uh, God's mercy. Yeah, that's another good one. Not, uh, not looking for God's grace, but secretly having their own agenda. Yeah, they had their own agenda. Yeah, so people honing in on it. So we're getting, we're getting, we're getting, we're there. We, we there. And, uh, 
and so we sitting there uh active being self righteous in knowledge. Yeah, so we have a lot of people uh in the power of the most high God glorifying their own flesh and yet that that's a little bit going a little bit more than what, what we looking for. There was teaching and speaking, false doctrine and misleading people. That's <laughs> that's kind of straight to the point. Uh sheep and wolf clothing, teaching false doctrine. Yeah, in 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 what you want to do, we want to look at something as you're doing that. Because everybody's honing in false prophets teach uh teach for filthy lucre. Yeah. Turning the truth into what yeah, so everybody gets so if we can have everybody stop right now, we're gonna we're gonna look at that and see the actual cause because a lot of people they, they they sin they must be going back looking at what was going on and they see what's happening and uh not looking for god's grace but looking for their own agenda yeah so we can stop right now we can stop um we can we can stop putting in what our thoughts are and we're going to get ready to go so we're going to look at that so a lot of people they start honing in on what was going on and and what i want you to make sure of is a lot of people, a lot of well, this one, a lot of people, a lot of people was hitting it. A lot of people hit this one, and I think they were turning the truth into a lie for filthy lucre and greed. Yeah, but but we want to find out what was going on there. You're not doing the will of God, but the will of man. Uh, yeah, we know that. See that we already know. So so we 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 wanted to. And so right now we just want to stop. Yeah, but I appreciate that, Sister Bernadette. We want to stop all the comments for right now and look at what was happening. So now what we want to do is focus on on what was happening there. What was going on here? We want to sit there and see. So now we we see here when we look at this. And what was they doing? It's in for. There are certain men, so we want to keep that in mind. There are certain men crept in unawares who were before old ordained. So these men was already ordained to do this, of this condemnation. It's telling you right in front, they was ordained to do this. Ungodly men turning the grace, the grace of our God into lasciviousness. So a lot of people was hitting that. A lot of people... They, evidently they understood the first one or they got they caught hold to the first one because a lot of people started putting in exactly what it, what was going on so they turned it into lasciviousness and, and lasciviousness can sit there to say okay hey we're, you what, we're trying to get this plane well I ain't going to bring up the plane yet I say well I'm trying to get this gospel over all over the world and I don't have the time to to try to go first class or go in coach or go in, in business class you know but you know, I just need a plane. If I had a plane, I can get this everywhere. All I got to do is drop the seed. And drop the seed, and then we have somebody pick it up. Then once they pick it up, they can start pushing it. And what that's doing, that's denying the grace and the mercy and the favor of God. That's what that was doing. They was committing that, and they was denying, is what a lot of people were saying. They were denying the creator God on what they was doing. Because it's telling you right there, it's saying this lasciviousness, denying the only creator God. They were denying that. Meaning denying. We wanted to understand and understand how the functioning of denying it means we transgress, we were forgetting and violating, even breaking the commandments of God. That's what denying is. We denying his ways. We denying on what he said we can do. We denying that. We denying the only creator God, including the creator of salvation. We denying those. So, and what they did is what a lot of people was doing. They created their own gods. They created their own gods. In fact, I'm going to show you something right here. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And they create their own gods. And it's telling you right up here where it tells you first in Second Thessalonians, we're going to see how they did that. And a lot of people already had this in there. A lot of people put that in there. And it says, let no man deceive you by any means. 
for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. How? Through lasciviousness. They're going to drop seeds on you. And people, and many of us fell for that. Many of us have built buildings and many of us have done many things. But what do you say? Through lasciviousness. And we say, except there come a falling away first, that that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, because he's nothing but the son of Satan. Anybody sitting there and soliciting you for funds to help move the kingdom forward is crazy. It's crazy. But people, guess what? People are going to do it anyway. They're going to send it. They're going to put it in there. They're going to make sure it happens. And it's, and it's telling you this right here. They crept in unawares, and they who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. He was ordained to do this. The ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. They gonna drop these seeds on you. And it's telling you, and he he exalts himself in or that is worshipped, so that he now as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Because now the temple that was built, that it shows you right here. We're going to look at that uh, a little bit closer. We're going to look at Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to see that a little bit closer. 9 and verse 24. And you'll see it here. So now it's saying Christ is not entered into, into holy places made with hands. No, those are, those, are, those are temples. But in it's saying which are figures of the truth. So they're using a temple and they saying this is the place of God. But now God rests in bodies. You follow me? So this is how lasciviousness works. So since God rests in bodies, let's look at something. We're going to put in 1 Corinthians also to get to where we can get the understanding there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It's telling you, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temples of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So we know it's dwelling in each and every one of us. So now, since it's dwelling in each and every one of us, they have erected a, a, a building and saying this is a holy place, but it's made with hands, which are figures of the truth. But they they done switched this from the, the, the body and, and they made it a building. And since they made it a building, now you go into the building and now you see a man there who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. So now he, that's why I used to say it all the time and tell people, when you're going in there to this preacher, you can sit there and say whatever he is to you, that man is God to you. He's God. People say, oh no, he's not no God to me. Yeah, he's God to you. You're going to see God. That's why I told you that. And most people sit there, no, he's not, no. If you're going into a building I don't care what preacher is up there. That man is God to you. They can sit there and argue that all day long. Oh, no, that's not the truth. That's not the truth. He, Christ, is not entered into holy places made with hands. The same as we see in Acts chapter 7, verse 48. We know God don't dwell in temples made with hands. So you see that there in these ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. So they, they didn't got these thoughts. They didn't got these things caught up. And now they got people believing because they was able to drop these seeds and made people believe something. And what did they do? They made them forget. They made them forget. In denying God. Just by dropping little seeds. And they created their own God because denying was the key. They, they needed you to deny this. That's where lasciviousness kicked in. Let's, let's, let's go up here a little bit and now we're going to go back down just to find out a little bit more of what's going on. Now we're going to say, it says, Jude, the servant of, of salvation of the anointed one, including the brother of James, to them that are sanctified, they separated by God, the creator, including preserved in salvation of the anointed one, including called mercy upon you. Peace and love be be to all multiply beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you the common. The common. 
the reason why we're harping on this is common. It, it's, not, it's not crazy. It's, it's always been there. The common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort, to encourage. That's all exhort is, to encourage you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It was already delivered to you, but now what they have done, they dropped these seeds. They have dropped these seeds on you. And now people sitting there, they're in this, they're in these figures of the truth. Remember, um, remember Solomon, wisdom of Solomon? Remember this? We go over to 14 in the same thing you see in uh it'll tell you from in wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 2 and we'll go down a little bit it says verily desire to gain devise that including workmen built it by his skills this right here this holy place and it's telling you by the providence O Father, govern, for that has made the way in the sea. For thou hast made a way in the sea, including a safe path in the waves, showing that thou can save from all dangers. Yea, though a man went to sea without art. So he went out without this perfect thing. He went out there. He didn't want to take God with him. Nevertheless, nevertheless, that he would work by of thy wisdom should be idle, including therefore do men commit their lives to a small piece of wood. It's right here. It's right here. And they had crept in unawares. And he was ordained to do this, and then godly men turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. They were able to do this. We can't say it's not true because you see it. <laughs> you see it daily. And this is this is what's happening. So this is lasciviousness 101. So it's the same thing as if I'm sitting there telling people, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a big facility. So, you know, if you guys can donate, you know you know, uh, $10 a month or a hundred dollars a month to where we can save up to where we can get a building to where we can have a place to where I can be teaching you on, on a, all, all the time basis. And I can be there for you. Okay. First thing somebody got to say is why well, you can't just be where you're at right now. Simple. That's simple. Simple analogy. No, I need to be in a building where people can come. But what about people in other other states, other countries? Oh, if they ever come, if they ever come, if they ever come, they have a place they can come. He said, exhort that you should earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to you. But it's telling you what was going on. So now it's telling you even more. So what's happening here? It says in, in, in the time of old also when proud giants perish, the hope of the world governed by the hand escape in a weak vessel and left all ages the seed of generations. This crazy doctrine that people do right today. That seed, that same seed is this ungodly kind of this lasciviousness that they drop. All they got to do is drop that one little seed. The seed, you see the seed, God got one, well, he got one too. He left that seed for, for a generation, for all ages of generation. This one little seed. And everybody goes there for that one thing. tells you a little bit more for wisdom is given is the word whereby righteousness cometh it's coming right out of that figure of the truth 
these young men, these, these ungodly men that's crept in unawares and turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. They didn't drop these seeds on you. They didn't did these things to you. And it's telling you even more so what's happening here now. It says, but that which is made with hands is cursed. This building is cursed. As well as it and he that made it, he made it because he made it in it because being corruptible, it was called God. It's all, it's all right here in front of you. It's not rocket science. It's not hard. It's not complex. It's all right in front of you. And, and you have people who sit there and tell you about camps and churches and, oh no, but ours is not like that. I don't care which one it is. I don't care which one it go to. It's telling you right there. These ungodly men, they turn into grace of God into lasciviousness. I tell you what, um, have you have you ever attended a church? Or you seen a church start and the preacher he comes in a not so nice car lives in an apartment but he's a good orator and two years later he's pulling up in a brand new Mercedes or more expensive than that and has a house now on the hill have you ever witnessed that anybody I, I witnessed that before so I'm just asking, have anybody else witnessed that? Anybody else witnessed that? Yeah, we got a couple. We got one saying they, they witnessed it. Yeah, we got a couple of people don't witness that. Because it's prevalent. But they'll tell you they're doing God's work. All they have to do is drop the seed. These men has crept in unawares. These same identical men who opposes and exalts himself all that is called God and that is worshipped so that he sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That's what he's doing. This is all he's doing. It's all laid out for us, but the same thing is you having some people, no matter what, they're gonna marginalize in the head that they that is right in their own eyes. And it's telling you all up front what it is. All they have to do is be have lasciviousness in their head. And it says for the ungodly in his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. This is hateful unto God. So it's telling you even more so, it says, for that is made which is punished together with him that made it. So all, so even if you're attending it, that's cool. You keep attending it. But you going you punish just along with, with the one that made it. Because lasciviousness, once the seed is dropped, now you're sitting there talking about what's going on with God. So certain things that happen and why you have to look at it in a certain way. And I'm going to show you what you key in on on this here. And I want to make sure this is highlighted. I want to show you something. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what you key in on. Oh, dang it. So as you sit there and you see this here, and you looking at this here, what you want to key in on, oh, dang it, this one way from over there. <clears throat> we go to Jude 1 and 4. So as you look at this, it's telling you for men that, that crept in unawares and where before old ordained, this condemnation, ungodly men turned the grace of our Lord, of our God, into lasciviousness, including denying the only creator, God, including our Lord 
Yahweh Shai the Messiah. And as you'll see, as you keep going down, it says, I will for that reason put in your remembrance. So he wants you to remember, though you once knew this, how that the Creator, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage, afterwards destroyed them that believe not. You see how he's talking. He's telling you what's going on. So, because if you don't believe, then you're going to be punished with the with the people who believe in the piece of wood, the ones who made the piece of wood. You're going to be destroyed with them. He's not going to sit there, oh, ha-ha, I'm cool too. No, he's going to destroy you with it because then you easily, you're highly easily impressionable. You, you're too easily to be impressed upon, and you can, always, you can turn on a dime. So with this here, what we want to do, when you get to four, and as you're going through here, the main one you want to focus on <clears throat> is that word right there, denying. Because it's, it's, it's forgetting and violating and breaking the commandments of God. So that means you can create, you're going to deny. So denying the only creator God, you're denying him. You're denying our... Uh, Lord, Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, you denying that. These two you are denying. And the same thing you denying, you turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Because you denying the grace of God through denying God. That's what this is saying. That's how you, that's how you see it. So the only one you need to focus on is denying. So once you understand what denying is, and denying is talking about transgress and forgetting the violating and breaking of the commandments of God, now we can go anywhere in here because now we know, one, these are ungodly men turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, comma. Now we don't even need the and. We're saying including denying. We don't need it. Well, all we got to do into lasciviousness because what did they do? Denying the creator God. They denied him. Denying our Lord of salvation, the anointed one. So it said, I therefore will put into your remembrance. So now he's so now he just wants you to remember this. Because this is what they did. They dropped those seeds to make you forget, to make you go somewhere else. To make you believe in something else. And he's telling you, he says, having having saved people out of Egypt afterwards. Destroyed them that believe not. And the messengers which kept not the first estate. So these messengers which kept not the first estate. But left their own habitation. Why? Why was that happening? Because it's telling you everything that was done here. Everything that was done here. When you sit there, see, because they, they, they left their own habitation. Because it's telling us right up here, I gave all diligence and right unto you the common salvation, but left their own habitation. They did, these messengers. So when you see it, it says, gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, including, including with this, the common salvation, including the angels, these messengers, these same guys which left their first habitation. This is telling you right up front what's going on. This is telling you right up front what's going on here. So as you see this is going, now it's telling you, beloved, when I gave our diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. Including angels, which kept not the first estate, but left their own habitation. Why? Because there were certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained in this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness. You see, you see how this we can we can tear this down any kind of way we need to now. 
Why? Because the main focus is they denying God. They denying what, what salvation is. We had a common salvation, but they denied that. Now they're telling you salvation is another way. Everybody understand that. Just want to make sure everybody understand. And you see why I can tear it down any kind of way. Once we know the main focus on what lasciviousness was, in which was a seed which they was dropping, and then they did that by denying God. They want you to forget his ways of it. Just want to make sure we understand. And let me see. We got so people clear, clear. Okay. Yeah, clear. Got it. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay. So, so that's main thing is, well, everybody get it. Okay, good, good. I want to look at our sister Nikita. Yeah, yep, she got it. Okay. So that so that was the main focus of that. That was the main point on what was happening. And and once you understand the key in on 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 what the main focus was, because our main focus was lasciviousness. But we had to key in what were they doing with this? We wanted to find out what were they doing. So we had to key in on it. So as you read, you want to key in on what was the main focus on what they was doing. Because it's in turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. The grace of God was being turned into lasciviousness. But how? That's what we have to figure out. How was they doing it? How was they turning this? How was they dropping these seeds? Because it's telling you, it says they left all age a seed of generation so they left they so they left this information we had to go get that we had to go get this information they left they left a seed they so they so they left a word for all of us but how did they do it that was the catch and and now when you go into these buildings most people don't most people still tell you no this is just he's just a pastor this no that man is God to you because it's telling you he's going to sit in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Because that building is just a figure of the truth which God rests in men and women. He don't rest in buildings. But they saying God is in this place. I know many people don't heard that. God is showing in this place. God is in this place. Yeah, God's in this place and that man you're looking at is God to you. And he's making you deny the only creator, God. Lasciviousness one-on-one. -on -one. Because all they have to do is drop the seed. Once they drop the seed and you bite it, lasciviousness is in. Now all they have to do is water it. That's it. In fact, sometimes you going to water it. Most times, most of us do all the watering. All they have to do is put the seed in the ground. And we'll water it, we'll water it every day. So, this is, this is what's going on for each and every one of us. This is what's happening. So... I just want to make sure we understood all that. I just want to make sure we all understand that. And let me see. I see. I don't see nobody else. Um, I'm trying to sit there to see anybody else on this. Do we have any any clarity on this? And if none, then we're gonna move back over. And understand the word. Yeah, all that I don't need. All I'm needing is yes or no. I don't need all that. So, 
And just like I said, we really trying to make sure just we run in the class, not trying to run to where we having a whole bunch of stuff going on in this chat. Yeah, so everybody get it? Just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay, that's just want to make sure you got it. That's the key. We're just trying to make sure you got it. Okay, so everybody understand it good. Good. So now I would just want to understand. <clears throat> so I just want us to understand something. I'm going to put something up. I want to see the people. Can you recognize it? Can you recognize it? I'm going to sit there. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to sit there and see. Can we recognize it? I'm going to see if we can recognize it. Is this lasciviousness? That's what we want to see. Is this lasciviousness? So let's go up. We're going to check. I'm going to, I'm going to put two verses up there. But I want to find out. Is this lasciviousness? So just before we go out, I want to make sure we got it. So we're going to go to one. We're going to look at Ruth. Chapter two. And... Verse five. You want to see that one? And um, is that lasciviousness in verse five in Ruth chapter two? Is that, that's a yes or no question. Is that lasciviousness? Is that lasciviousness? Okay, we got one, and then I also want to put in, um, let me put in another one, and let me, I'll get ready for it in one second, but I'm going to put it up, but I'm going to put it in a second, um, Second Samuel 11, and so we got some people, so we're looking at that one, then I'm going to do the other one in one second. So we have some people, um, everybody, we got a lot of people saying no, no. We got one person say yes. We got two yeses. And we got three yeses, four yeses. No, but that's not lasciviousness from Boaz at all. So that's what I'm saying. You got to watch how lasciviousness is being committed. Boaz didn't have lasciviousness behind him. He didn't have, he wasn't dropping the seed. He wasn't dropping no type of seed. Boaz, let's, 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 let's go up here and let's look at it. Let's go up here and look at it. And, uh, and let's, get, let's get a better understanding here. Okay. It says, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech. And his name was Boaz. Ruf, uh, Ruth the Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me go into the field and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers of the, and have a hap was of the light in the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. And remember, Boaz came from Bethlehem, 
and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with thee. And he and, he, and they answered him, The Spirit of God bless thee. Then Boaz unto his servants went and said of his reapers, Who damsel is this? So my thing is, how in the world is that lasciviousness? You don't hear any seed that he was trying to drop on anything about it. He, you don't see where he tried. You don't. We read verse one in chapter two down to that verse. You don't see where he was planning anything. There was no plan there. He just wanted to know who damsel is that. Who damsel is that? This is why I say it's, it's dangerous when you want to know what scripture is and to understand what it is because that's not lasciviousness. Let's look at another one. Let's look at another one. In... We're going to look at this one in 2 Samuel. And it said, It came to pass in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. And we want to see, is it there? I'm going to read it, then we're going to see what's going on. And if you guys saying you were, you you had it wrong, I had the wrong script. I don't know how you had the wrong script because I'm showing you the scripture is already highlighted. So we don't need the scriptures highlighted. So it's not a wrong scripture. It says, And it come to pass in evening tide, that David arose from off his, his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. Including from the roof, he saw a, wash, a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Is that lasciviousness? Is that lasciviousness? Okay, I understand that. Uh, that's uh, Rachel. I understand. Yeah, as yeah, long as you see it now, that's, that's the point. If you didn't see it the first time, you get it. That's good, cause you, that's the point. You gotta get it. And as long as you're sitting there, oh, I see it now. Good. I'm good. I'm happy for that. Cause you get it. And a lot of people sitting there saying, we got one saying no, one saying absolutely. And so we getting ready to find out something. <laughs> Something real interesting. Okay. Everybody's saying yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let them go a minute, and then um, and as soon as it slow down, we're gonna stop. So everybody and Sister Tanisha, we got a couple of no's running. No, 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 no. Uh, Rachel, I'm not gonna let you get away with that. You either gonna put yes or no. I'm not gonna let you do that. I'm not gonna let you put could be. You gotta do one or the other. So I need you to re put in again. And that's Rachel Williams. You got to re put in again. I'm not gonna let you get away with that one. You gotta put it in. I want I wanna know. Yes or no. We yeah, I'm not gonna let you ride the fence. I'm not gonna let you ride the fence. I'm looking for a yes or no, and that's for Rachel. Okay, 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 she's saying yes. Okay, we good, we good. Okay, so we got some no's and we got some yeses. And uh, I need to kill Sister Bernadette because she actually spilled the beans on it, <laughs> what it is. So I need everybody to stop because she actually spilled the beans on that one. She, but the same thing is, is what happened. So everybody can stop right now. We can have everybody stop putting their comment in. Because Sister Bernadette, she, she, she caught what was going on. She caught what was happening. And that's a good thing. But she spilled the beans, but she caught what was going on. So it's good. It's good all the way through. So I just need everybody to stop for a second. Everybody just stop commenting for a second. So if everybody can stop commenting. If everybody can stop commenting for right now. And then we're going to work that out because um, Sister Bernadette told it. She, she, she spilled the beans on it. 
she spilled the beans on that one. It's a good thing, <laughs> but that's just the way she is. She, she see it, she's just calling it the way she see it. So that's good. And she said, no, nothing was said or a thought was given. Exactly the point. <laughs> exactly the point. So that was good. That was a good catch. That was a good catch. So let's look at that again. And this is chapter, this is verse two. Let's look at verse one. It says at the time, and it came, uh, it came to pass after time was expired at the time when Kings went forth to battle, David sent Joab, his servants with him and all the, all Israel and destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rahab, uh, Rabath. But David tarried in Jerusalem. That's all they got. But now verse two, it came to pass evening time. David arose from off his bed, walked upon the roof in the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. So you knew he wasn't that far because he can actually see her face. Then it says this, it says, and David sent and inquired after the woman and said, is not this, you see what it's saying, is not this, is is not this Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. It's not this her. It's not this her. So he inquired of it. So evidently he knew who she was. He knew exactly who she was. So now, David inquired of her. David inquired of her. Let's go down one more down. David sent messengers, took her, and she came unto him, and he lay with her. So I want people to put in there what actually, what was it? Was it lasciviousness? or not? Was it lasciviousness or not committed? I'm going to wait for your answers. Yes or no? Was lasciviousness committed or no? So we're waiting to see. Was lasciviousness committed or not? Okay, we're getting a lot of yeses, some noes. We're getting a mixture. No, no. Yes, it was an act. Yes, it was an act. Yes, we're getting, we're getting more yeses than noes. Okay. Yes, he sent messengers. Okay. So we might have to do another one on this one again. Uh... Mr. Wanda Smith, no. Um, yes, yeah, we're getting a mixture of yes and no. So we might still need to figure out a little bit more on this. Uh, Sister Burgett, don't know. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Sister Gear, no. Just lust, okay. She, okay, she's being definite, yep. Okay, so some people know what lust is. So was lasciviousness committed? So we can actually stop commenting. Was lasciviousness committed? No. It wasn't. Lust was committed. That was the, he committed that act. Because what he did is he inquired of her. You, let's, let's look at that again. So it said, and he said to, he said to one, he said, he once, he uh, once said, is not this Bathsheba? So he already knew who she was. The daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So he knew who she was. But he see her naked and everything else. And he liked what he seen. So now lasciviousness would have been, he would have dropped the, he would have dropped the seed. Man, I would like to get with her. He would have dropped the seed of lasciviousness. And then somebody else would say, hey, let me go get her for you. That's lasciviousness. That's the, now he, that's, that's what's going on. 
he would have dropped the seed. Man, oh man, you got to see it. Now he's dropping the seed. But what he did, you see, he said, David sent messengers and took her and came unto him and he lay with her. And she was purified from uncleanness. So that act was lust. It wasn't lasciviousness. The act was lust. So hopefully um, we might have to end up going through this again. And, and I want to make sure uh, people understood that. that. That's part of the thing. Okay, now it makes sense. He was committing lust. Yeah, exactly the point. Oh, I see and understand now it's clear. Okay. Because other than that, he would have been, he would have dropped the seed. He would have dropped the seed about it. That he had, you know, he would have been changing something. He would have wanted to change it. That's, that's, that's sitting there, that's dropping the seed of it. And I see uh, Brother Kevin Jenkins, I see he's saying it's clear. Um, Sister uh, Yuwanda, I know it makes sense, okay? And, and spoke what was in his heart. <laughs> yeah, spoke what was in, yeah, telling you what it is. Thought versus act. <laughs> okay, all right. No seed was dropped to get it. Now, that's cold-blooded there. But, but yeah, yeah, okay, get it now. Yeah, true. Uh, okay, understand. Can you get one more example? Yeah, let's 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 see if we can find a pretty good example. I find understand now. Lust, open the eyes. Uh, lust of the eyes. Yeah, but he but he 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 got what he wanted because he because he's he's seen it. He lusts for it and he got it. <clears throat> so, lasciviousness is a little bit different. So let's see. Uh, Actually, I'll show you another one. Let me see. I think I've got a pretty good one. Let's see. Um, let me see. Um, I've got a pretty good one. Probably throw you off. This one might do it. Oh, let me see. Ah, uh, but that won't work. This is a good one. This is a good one. Okay, let's 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 try one more. We have some people that wanted another example. One more example. Okay, let's try another example. And. It's, oh, it's over here. Okay. Oh, it's the way over here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Let me switch this over. Okay. So now we're going we're gonna to do one more. <clears throat> and we'll see this. And uh, we're going to look at Acts chapter 8. And we want to look at what's going on there. We're looking at eight eighteen. It says, And when Simon saw that though land on of the apostle hands, the Holy Ghost was was given, he offered them money. So can you tell me what that lasciviousness or was it lust and to make it clear uh just tell me was it lasciviousness so if it's not lasciviousness it's one or the other so was it lasciviousness that's yes or no no see when he um inquired of her he didn't say what it was. He just inquired of her. She said, is not this her? That's all he did. He didn't say he wanted to lay with her. 
you had dropped the seed, saying he would have dropped the seed, saying he wanted to. So is um, is that lasciviousness on on this Simon? I have uh, lasciviousness. I got Sister Nikita saying yes. Yeah. We got one saying no. We got Pryor saying yes. We got Sister Sherry saying that's lust. We got Sister April, no, no, lust. Brother Wade Jackson, lasciviousness, lust. Yes, yes, no, lust. Okay, we got a real mixture here, a serious mixture here. This is a real serious mixture here. So this actually is a pretty good one because I'm talking, they got a serious mix here. We got a serious mix. So it was laying on the hands because he seen something. He seen something and some people saying it's lust. Some people saying it's, it's lasciviousness. Some saying lasciviousness, some saying it's lust. So let me see. I'm talking, we got a serious, serious, serious mix. A serious mix. So, lasciviousness. Okay, let's look at let's 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 look at this real good. It says, uh, let's go up to sixteen. It says for. It says for comparing, yet he was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Creator of salvation. And it's telling you right here. And then, then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. So they seen something. So they seen they they received the Holy Ghost, and and including when Simon saw, through laying on of the apostle hands, the Holy Ghost was given. So he's once he seen that, once he seen that go down, he offered them money. He offered them money. Was that lasciviousness? And I see, <laughs> I see Bernadette. She, she sister Bernadette. Key, she keeps, she keeps spoiling the beans. But that's what it was. It was lust. It was greed. It was one hundred percent greed. So she didn't, she didn't told it again. She actually, she making sure. No, that was one hundred percent lust, because. He he gonna tell what he did, see, cause he gonna tell on himself. Saying, "Give me this power that to whomsoever I lay hands, he receive the Holy Ghost." And Peter uh, said unto him, "Thy money perishes because it's telling you right there. I thought the gift of God may be purchased for money, greedy, being greedy. Yeah, yes, he offered money for it. It's exactly the point." That let you know Greg was there, cause he wanted to make he was he was gonna make it he was gonna make it merchandise, he was gonna merchandise the Holy Ghost is what he was gonna actually they do it today anyway, they merchandise the Holy Ghost yeah that's okay, it's all right but the main thing is, you wanna you guys know what it is, you guys understand what it is so as you read in Scripture, start incorporating and seeing what is happening. Is lust happening or is lasciviousness happening? So when you read, just, just look for that. Just look for it. See, do you see it? That's all you got to do. See, do you see it? If you see it, mark it. If you don't see it, then you okay. What one, which one do I see? Which do I see? And see, and, um, uh, Sister Bernadette, she... <laughs> she she knew exactly what it was, yeah. Cause he he had a desire. Hey, he seen it. He seen the opportunity. He he was being an opportunist. Technically, what he was doing, he was being an opportunist at that point. Cause he was greedy. He said, "Now, man, I give you some money for it. Cause I'm I'm gonna make a killing off of this." That was greed. So, with that, I'm gonna do um. 
play um I'll make sure I'll make sure uh let me make sure we're gonna check uh, one piece on here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put this uh, link in here. And we're going to do a 15-minute debriefing <clears throat> in here in Zoom. So we're going to so we're going to do a 15-minute debriefing. I'm getting ready to put this link in there in Zoom to where you guys can come in there and we can do the debriefing there. So what I did, I just saved that so you should be able to see it to where you guys can get a debriefing of that, understand it, and then we can go end up going from there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, give me one hot second. One hot second. And give me one minute. And let me see. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is go through it. Uh, we'll do a debriefing in the back, and everybody who participated in the front, you're more than welcome to come in the back. And we're just going to do a debriefing there, make sure everybody understood it, and then we can move forward on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end it here. We're going to... Um, kick it in on, a, on, a, on another one but until next time we'll sit there we'll continue to move these forward and continue to go through it but just make sure you as you go through scripture make sure you understand it and you understand how lasciviousness is working so you can see you can drop that seed and if you can make that materialize into something you can you can gain from it but lust it's automatic it's automatic so with that uh, if you look in the bottom, if you refresh, you'll see the Zoom meeting is at the bottom. So with that, until next time, I say to each and every person, until then, Shalom. Mm -hmm.